Remember this thing? I recently did a quick look at the device and didn't go over all the details, but now I'm back for the full review. So if you're interested in just the unboxing, do me a favor and check out that video. Now, one big question I had going into this review was, who exactly is this handheld for? I'll try to answer that a bit later, as well as tell you what I like, don't like, and then give you a summary at the end. And this time, we're going to have a couple of little surprises too. Real quick, you should know that this handheld was sent to me for review by Absolute, but that all opinions expressed in the video are my own, as they didn't tell me there was anything I should or shouldn't say. But they did tell me that if you use code GG10 at checkout, you can save 10 bucks and using the affiliate link helps the channel out as well. Now, throwing up the specs on screen, you can see that the processing power would suggest that this device is solely for streaming. So keep that in mind because your mileage may vary greatly depending on your network connection. That said, let me say that for streaming, this handheld here is absolutely the real deal. Wait, don't click away. Why do other creators get to use that joke but not me? Come on, man. So the Absolute Handheld, or the Absolute One, as it's listed on their website, is labeled as their go-to streaming solution, designed to allow you to play games from Steam, xCloud Gaming, and even PS Remote Play. Now, here's what I like about the Absolute One. It's very lightweight, coming in under 500 grams, or just under a pound, and the controls feel nice and responsive. The screen is also a nice sized 7 inch display, so no, it doesn't feel like playing on your phone. Unless you have a Z Fold or something, then I guess that screen is bigger. Okay, uh, about the controls again though. Something has to be said about the backlit buttons. I've never seen a handheld use these before, and it really makes me wish more companies did this. It doesn't have any rainbow unicorn vomit mode, if you're into that kind of thing, but there are a few static color choices that all look very clean. There's no other RGB on the device, and while the sticks are a little smaller than I'd like, they seem to work fine, so beyond that, it's running Android and it comes bundled with a few of the streaming platform apps that I mentioned earlier right out of the box. Something else I like about the handheld is the update process, which is pretty straightforward, as you get a notification if an update is ready, and then with just a few clicks, you're in business. None of this digging through an app to download the update manually and then look for the file type of nonsense. I'm looking at you, Maya Seuss. Going back to the obvious winner here of the device is the display. The seven inch 1080p panel, while only 60 Hertz, does look very nice. And as far as my research goes for this video, it's the only dedicated streaming device with this level of display, unless you count the Logitech G Cloud, which is of course more money, but we'll go over a little bit more of a comparison a bit later. Let's move over now to what I don't like. This is gonna sound unfair, but I wish the device had Wi-Fi 6. I didn't find that Wi-Fi 5 onboard limited my experience, which you can see here with my little latency test. This is my laptop, which has a Wi-Fi 6 connection and it's playing through Steam Link. You can see here there's very little latency and I imagine it's even better through hardwired desktop. Now I am on the same floor as my router, but it's situated on the opposite side of the house. But again, it's one of those things where your experience is gonna wildly vary depending on what your connection is like. So it would have been one of those nice to have things to have Wi-Fi 6. Another thing I don't like is the charging speed. Now, they do clearly state in the manual that you should use the included cable, which is a USB-A to USB-C cable. And so it seems that you do need a very specific wattage, under about 20 watts, in order for it to charge properly. So if you lose this cable, you can't just grab any USB-C power delivery cable and expect it to work. Mind you, this is a very minor gripe, and it could very much be a me problem. Though, I do have this cable creation cable here, which does serve the purpose of charging the device if you need a replacement or I guess if you have an iPhone 15. With regards to the charging speed specifically, it's not fantastic because there's no quick charge and that low wattage as I mentioned. So it does take a good few hours in order to charge if you're on empty. Thankfully, when the battery is charged, it will last for several hours while game streaming. And even if you put it to sleep, the charge seems to be retained for at least a day, only losing a percentage point or two from what I could tell. My last gripe is the lack of video output. Sure, this is a very niche feature to output a picture from a streamed game to a TV, but like Wi-Fi 6, it would have been a nice to have feature in my opinion. Plus, because there's no video out capability, I can't connect my X-Real Air glasses. Sucks to be me. And now, before I get to the conclusion of this video, I wanna share some surprises that I found and try to answer that question about who this device is for. The first thing that surprised me comes thanks to a viewer who asked in the unboxing video whether this could stream emulated games. So thank you. I did some digging and tinkering and found out that with things like Emudeck, you can indeed stream your emulated games through Steam Link. And boy, is it glorious. 
You can see here that you still need an active connection, so there's that. And depending on the emulator, you might need to do a little bit more tinkering as I had some trouble mapping some of the controls in some cases. But if you have a powerful enough system to run your emulated games and you have that decent connection, I'd wager it's a more enjoyable experience than maybe even playing on the native retro or last gen hardware. Another pleasant surprise was that this thing is capable of playing some Android games. Now, I wouldn't play the latest Final Fantasy or Genshin Impact on it, but with some additional controller mapping features, this thing could be a nice little Android handheld as well. And someone from the company did tell me that they are working on additional controller mapping software. Then my next surprise came when I started doing some research for this video again, only to find that there's really nothing out there that competes at this price range and spec level. Let me explain. The obvious comparison would be something like the Logitech G Cloud that I mentioned earlier, or a Razer Edge, both streaming targeted devices that, as far as I can tell, cost more money and may or may not do basically the same thing. Let's look at the G Cloud specifically first. They share the same display size and resolution, but you'll note that this is an LTFS panel. Truthfully, I had no idea what that meant, so I had to look it up. Either way, this panel looks great, and in the $200 range, I couldn't find another device with a 7-inch 1080p panel. So while the Logitech also has a similar 7-inch 1080p IPS display and is better equipped to do a little more emulation work, it also costs at least another $80 based on current pricing as of filming. Then there's the Razer Edge, which also has a smaller screen, albeit an AMOLED screen, and a much better CPU. That thing will definitely take you further in terms of emulation, but the issue with that is it's $400. Okay, yeah, that's a no from me. Since this is gonna bleed into the conclusion, let's talk about who this device is for. If you're looking specifically for a handheld that can stream your PC, PS, Xbox games to, or you use one of the game streaming services, it's pretty hard to go wrong with the Absolute One. And while there are other devices that are more capable of emulation and cost less money, like a Retroid Pocket 3 Plus or Anbernic RG405V, those also have significantly smaller displays with different aspect ratios, retro game oriented controls, and so they're probably not great to stream your modern PC titles to overall. Now, there is an elephant in the room here, which does compete on price with the Absolute One, and it has a larger display. It's the PlayStation Pro, <laughs> just kidding. I doubt that thing can stream anything other than PS5 titles. But if it turns out I'm wrong and this video ages poorly, you can absolutely get mad at me. Okay, I'll stop with that, but you shouldn't stop here. So make sure to go and check out the ROG Ally and Xreal Air reviews next. Gee, gee.